Bias tape is used in a lot of sewing projects and I love working with it, but did you know that you can make your own? Why would you want to make your own bias tape when you can go to, go to the fabric store and just buy a package of bias tape? If you've ever gone to the fabric store to buy bias tape, you'll notice that they only come in a selective amount of solid colors. And if you're lucky, you'll find the color that you need to match your sewing project fabric. And what you're not going to see is bias tape that is made from cute colored prints. I'm Jan Hal. Welcome to my channel where I show you tips and tricks for all your DIY projects to make them simple, enjoyable, and I may even save you a little money. If you like my content, make sure you like, share, and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can make your own continuous strip of bias tape. This method of making bias tape is not going to only save you money, but it's going to give you a nice professional look and a one of a kind look for your projects. I'm going to show you how you can get five yards of bias tape by using just one fat quarter of fabric. I'll show you how you can make a single fold bias tape, a double fold bias tape, and just bias strips for binding a quilt. Make sure you stay with me for the whole video because I'm going to show you throughout the video several different tips that maybe you haven't seen before. And I'm going to show you how I store my fabric bias tape strips. So let's not waste any more time and get to the project. I do have a previous video where I have shown you how to make bias tape using a different method. And in that video, I go over more detail about what bias tape is, what it's used for. So you might want to check that out and I'll put the link in the description below. Let's go over the materials and items that you will need. You'll need some fabric and I find using a fat quarter, which measures 18 by 21 inches is a good amount to work with. If you don't have fat quarters or you don't want to buy fat quarters, you can just cut your fabric 18 by 18 inches and you'll be good to go. I like having a variety of different colors on hand so that when I go to make a project, I can just quickly go through my stash and find something that I like. I could sit and make bias tape strips all day long. You'll need a pair of fabric scissors, a rotary cutter, and a mat comes in real handy getting those straight edges. You don't absolutely need them. You'll need a few straight pins, a sharp pencil or pen. If you have a bias tape maker, you can use those or I will show you how to fold the strips without one. You'll need your sewing machine and an iron and ironing board. So this really is quite simple. It only takes about 30 minutes to get five yards of bias tape. The first thing that you'll do is unfold your fat quarter. I'm going to give it a little pressing first just to get the wrinkles out and the folds out. Place the right side of the fabric up. Take the short edge of your fat quarter. If you've cut your fabric 18 by 18, you'll, you'll skip this part. We're just going to square it up by bringing the short edge over to the long edge. Line up the edges so it makes a perfect triangle. And you may need to square off the fabric because they, they don't always cut it straight at the fabric store. And a tip, if it's been a while since you've changed your rotary cutter blade, it makes a big difference if you have a sharp blade. And then you're going to cut off this excess. I'll put that in my scrap box. Before you open it up, we're going to be making two triangles and we're going to cut it along the fold of this triangle. So how to do that easily is just to take your scissors, lay them flat like this, and kind of push out onto that fold and with the flat edge of your scissors on the table. Just go ahead and cut down all the way. So we have two triangles. Flip this left side up to the top and take that top piece and we're going to flip that side up to the top. Line those edges up. We're going to leave a quarter inch tail on that side and bring it even with that side. Pin it in place. Sew down this top edge here using a quarter inch seam allowance. 
you can put a quarter inch presser foot on your sewing machine. But if your sewing machine doesn't come with a quarter inch presser foot, I'm going to show you a tip. Sometimes it's hard to gauge where that quarter inch will be, especially up higher on your sewing machine. I like to take a piece of masking tape or washi tape or this painter's tape and put it down on that quarter inch seam so it can help me align my fabric as I sew and keep it at that quarter inch. I'm going to leave my regular foot on my machine just for the sake of making it easier. And a lot of you may not have a quarter inch presser foot. I'm going to change my stitch length to a two instead of a two and a half. That will keep the stitches just a little bit more secure. Now another tip I'm going to share with you is when you start sewing on a single piece of fabric like we will here or very light fabrics like these cotton prints it kind of bunches up and it the feed dogs have a hard time grabbing it and pulling it so i just keep a bunch of little scraps of fabric in my sewing caddy there just for this purpose and i use them over and over again and it will really help with that problem so i'm just i'll put that underneath there fabric butt up against the edge of that scrap piece and start sewing. Now you don't need to back stitch. See how smooth that was and it didn't bunch up. Cut off your little scrap piece. Take it to the ironing board and press the seam open. Place the wrong side facing up and we're going to mark two inch strips. Now these two inch strips will make a double fold bias tape of a half inch or one inch single fold bias tape. Of course you can make bigger strips of bias tape if you want. So it's important that you be, you're very accurate with your lines. And you can just cut off that top extra fabric. Flip the right side facing up now bring these ends over and this end over. Now this is where you have to just trust. <laughs> you think that you would just line up it like this straight across, but we're not. We're going to shift it up one. This is where the magic happens. They want these lines to line up. I'm going to find this end and we're going to leave just a little corner quarter inch chunk of that point past that line there. So that'll be about right there. Well, you'll see in just a minute how it all works out. But we're gonna pin that in place. Make sure you're not pulling either the top or bottom tighter than the, the other. Go to the sewing machine and sew down that side. It won't be laying flat by any means. So it'll look like this. You'll just sew a portion and then continue to sew. Find the end and start sewing there. And then you'll press that seam open. So if you've ever made bias tape where you cut a bunch of strips and then you sew them together individually and then you have to press each individual strip seam allowance open, it's tedious, it takes a lot more time and this way you have such nice seam allowances that are pressed open. I didn't have record on when I was making the orange bias tape and then I started so I, I'm doing another color so I can show you this step and I still forgot to record. So what it would look like, you have that offset piece at the top and you'll just start cutting along the lines.
and continue cutting till you have five yards of bias tape. Ta-da! Now what do you do with it? You can fold it in half and use it as a binding using that method or I'm going to show you how you can use your bias tape maker to fold it for you. I'm going to move my mat out of the way because I learned the hard way years ago of putting my wool mat on top of my cutting mat and it warps the board. Make sure if you are using your, your wool mat that you're not putting it on your cutting board. If you're doing it manually without this, let me show you that first. Fold the bias in half. And then all you'll do is fold the edge to the fold and press it. And if you're making just single fold, you can bring the edges together in the center. If you're making double fold bias tape, you'll want to make one side a little bit longer than the other side. That's just how that it comes in the store. Let me see if I can grab this double fold. Now it's not very distinct, but there, this, this side is a little bit shorter than this side. There's a reason for that, and I'll get to that maybe in another tutorial. So if you wanted to do that with your homemade bias tape, you can do that. You'll just offset one of the sides just a little bit so that when you fold it in half on the double fold, can you see that, how that one back piece is going to be a little bit shorter. Let's use the bias tape maker. Stick one of those points, doesn't matter which point end you start at, and sometimes it's a little hard to get that out, and you can just take a pin and kind of cinch that up through that slip that they have there. I'll put a link in the description below where you can get these. They are quite handy and they come in several sizes. This is the biggest. So you're gonna kind of play with it a little bit to get it so it's folding. See how that? This is so exciting. And you'll just start pressing it as you pull. Now, where you, when you go over the seams, it kind of, you kind of have to fuss with it just a little bit but as you can see, it slides through pretty easily. But that is so much nicer than having to sew all those strips at weird angles and it works, but this is much better. So we're gonna to continue to do that until the whole strip is folded. Now I personally like to leave my strips wide because some projects when I'm using a, a double fold, I don't want that fold especially if I'm going around corners or things. If you have a pressed edge, it can kind of get a little off if you've got that pre-folded. This gives you a little bit more way to adjust it a little bit if you need to because there's not already that pre-pressed fold, if that makes sense. So I like to just store them like this, but there's some occasions where I know I'm going to be using a double fold on another particular project that I will press that double fold. Isn't this a cute one? Now I told you I would show you how I fold and store my bias tape strips. I take my comic boards that I showed you in another tutorial, how I store smaller portions of my fabric on comic boards. And I use those boards, I cut them to five by two and a half inches and keep these handy for when I make new bias strips. This is the same size board that comes with your store-bought bias tape. So if you have store-bought bias tape that's all one color, you can store them all together and they'll fit. And I just take one and start wrapping it around. You don't want to pull it too tight. And then I like to just tuck that end under. And I found the perfect box that matches the bins that I put my fabric in. And they all just fit in there nicely. It has adhesive on the back that I can fit on the inside of this cabinet door. 
and I'll put the link in the description below where I got that. So now they're organized and it's eye candy for my sewing room. As you can see, I've already have a few fabrics prints in mind. I can't wait to make more. I hope you like that tutorial. I hope it inspires you to get out your fabric, your sewing machine, and make some unique, one-of-a-kind bias tape. I have some fun upcoming tutorials showing you some projects using bias tape. Thanks so much for watching. Again, if you like these tutorials or if you have a question, leave a comment in the section below and give it a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Don't forget to click the bell. Have a wonderful day. Have fun sewing and we'll see you in the next tutorial. Thank you.